Hello, my name is Bivisha Patel and I'm going to be hosting a presentation on veterinary business management created by the Standing Committee on Veterinary Education or the International Veterinary Student Association. This is the first of many vet student talk videos on alternative veterinary subjects that have been historically poorly taught in veterinary schools. These are the learning objectives of the presentation. We'll be looking at examples of veterinary business markets in the USA and Europe. From them, we'll look at the employable attributes employers are looking for in our graduates, such as interpersonal skills. Then after, I'll share some ideas of how to incorporate business management teaching into the veterinary curriculum. So first, let's look at what's happening with veterinarians in the United States. And all credit of the data goes to the 2016 AVMA report on veterinary markets. According to the AVMA report, veterinary education in the United States has doubled since 1999, with an average annual increase of 9.14% per year of tuition fees. This could be due to the reduced government funding support, increased expense and development and expansion of veterinary schools. But all in all, this is creating a greater financial burden to our current veterinary students. They will be expected to fund it themselves or pay back loans as soon as they start their first job. And this begs the question of whether this will be financially, financially feasible to pay back this with the varying economic climate and the poor veterinary salary. With downturn in economy, this has increased the debt to income ratio. The gap between mean debt and mean income began to widen quickly after 2005. From 118% of income in 2001, to 192% of income, which is more than $64,000 in 2015. With a recession forecasted, increased competition for jobs due to increased number of graduates and potentially reduced or static demand of veterinary services represents a major problem for the profession and the livelihood of veterinarians. There is currently an imbalance in the supply to demand ratio. As you can see on the graph, in the past 10 years, the relative prices for veterinary services rose, expenditures for veterinary services per pet declined, and the number of pets not visiting the veterinarian increased. Services veterinarians charge are becoming more dearer because technology, drugs and intermediate products are advancing. Sometimes these direct costs are actually out of the control of the veterinarian because of the increased prices, pharmaceuticals, and technology suppliers charge. So because service prices are increasing, pet owners are becoming more reluctant to pay the current prices for their pet healthcare, especially if they can't afford their own healthcare. So this is a big issue and one where the government, human medicine and veterinary medicine sectors need to collaborate to change this mentality by promoting recommended insurances, offering subsidies or compensation schemes. The Congressional Budget Office, which is this office that measures the economic impact of federal legislation, expects growth to improve in 2016 to 3.1% and then slow to 2% through the end of the 10-year forecast period. So with the decreased GDP, veterinarians should expect a decreased demand for veterinary services, as, quite simply, owners have less money. The full recovery of actual GDP to long-term potential GDP is still, unfortunately, several years away. So the question is, are we prepared for this? And unfortunately, the answer is no, because we, don't ha we currently don't have the business lingo to analyse business market statistics or principles to then make the necessary changes to our business behaviour so we are prepared for the upcoming economic situation and varying demand intensity. The main message is that veterinarians in private sectors need a strong understanding of how to use economic theory to develop strategies for successful businesses. All the information presented so far has come from the AVMA report on veterinary markets. If you would like to know more about the current situation in the USA then I recommend you um, look up this reference to gain more insight into the USA veterinary markets. So what about Europe? All the information on Europe is derived from the Federation of Veterinarians in Europe study. From this study, 
It gives an overview to see where the main focus of professions lie in Europe at the moment. 70% of veterinarians work full-time, with the majority working in private practice, and 19% working in public sectors, such as veterinary public health work. Astonishingly, of the 78% who work full-time, 21% have a second job, indicating that the, that the job and the earning situation may not be satisfactory, even with all the effort veterinarians make to get where they are. This shows the, the proportion, the, the graphs, uh, sorry, the pie charts show the proportions of veterinarians working in different sectors of veterinary medicine. This distribution signifies the predominance of vets working in clinical practice, but shows 40% of vets are working in non-clinical fields, such as pharmaceuticals, research and education. And why so? Well, maybe it's because the highest earning veterinary trained professionals are those working in industry, working in non-clinical fields, such as government work. Or well, the third one is owners of large clinics, where you have three or more employees. Now, veterinary owners are declining, with the shift to big corporations taking over small practices. So the vet is no longer in charge of the economic matters, which actually could be a very threatening situation to the salary of the clinical profession for the future. As mentioned before, 21% have two different jobs and 17% of veterinarians work part-time. This may be related to the inequality in gender salary with 28% of females earning less than male colleagues. And this could be due to maternity leave, part-time work and the lack of consistency in the working schedule compared to males due to family commitments. And it would be very interesting to see if these imbalances are replicated in human medicine world and to find out why and if we can support it or change it. So the future of Europe. 80% of vets said they need more business training and 49% say there'd be, there should be more legislation for employees' rights for the profession in terms of salary, work hours and retirement plan. As the clinical industry is being taken over by corporates, this has led to a shift in what vets are required to achieve. For instance, being for monthly financial targets, having financial pressures to meet certain quotas, and management of practices changing, so vets have less of an authoritative role. So there is a need for business education in the veterinary profession, not only in Europe, and 80% say they do need more business tra training so that they can work with corporates, they can try to own their own business, uh, their own veterinary hospitals, and they also need business training to understand the economics and the finances to do a non-clinical fields in veterinary medicine, such as government work, pharmaceuticals and other industries. So there's a strong recommendation to incorporate the guidelines set by FVE, OIE and EVE on business management and using those guidelines to be incorporated into the curriculum or into the CPDs after graduation. So what skills are we looking for in our graduates? What employable skills are employers looking for? And the biggest one is communication and that includes speaking and writing and this is particularly important for non-clinical fields in veterinary medicine such as government work and uh, pharmaceutical industries where it's very important to communicate effectively for sales, for marketing, for advertising and to, uh, to uh, develop uh, connections and collaborations with other industries. Business is also highly, highly important and that includes administration, personal management, sales and marketing, finances, computing and leadership. So all these skills are especially important for non-clinical roles as I've mentioned because now, and it may be increasing, 40% of our uh, profession is going into these non-clinical fields. So it's very important to emphasise non-technical skills in our curriculum. So how can a vet be visited more often? And that involves three things. One is predictability of prices and the availability of competitive prices in particular. Two is offering services that brings convenience to the owners, such as pet drop-off drop schemes or extending opening hours. But the most important 
and the last one actually is inter interpersonal skills. The most important skill to have as a veterinarian is the ability to communicate and effectively share information and knowledge with clients, the public and colleagues. Selection during job, job interviews is often based on personality and communication skills and a perceived empathy for the job. So there's a need to understand what makes veterinarians more prepared to deal with changes in the economic climate and ensure their businesses are resilient enough to cope with the variability of clients' incomes as well. So the top three skills employers are looking for is interpersonal skills, second one is business skills, and the third one is the ability to problem solve. Specifics on business management would come with these skills, like recognising how best to communicate with clients on charging payments, as well as understanding the sources of profit in developing pricing estimates for clinical services. Now, just as the job market and the veterinary market is changing with the adapting economic climate, so should our education. Our education should be changing to the needs of what people, the public, veterinarians, expect of our graduates. So our education should be based on developing employable skills as well as knowledge and practical skills of the profession. So now I'm going to share with you some ideas of how to incorporate business teaching into the veterinary curriculum. So the themes can be divided into two main categories. One is professional development and two is business management. Professional development should be focused uh, on teaching students from day one and business management should be taught to students from years two to three onwards when they start to develop more clinical knowledge. So professional development. This, these, th this, this type of module should include interview practice, networking events and allowing students to practice presentations with actors and preparing to allow them to prepare themselves on how to conduct themselves professionally in good and bad scenarios. They should also be given career advice from higher professionals on writing CVs, as well as encouraging them to undertake business management, continued professional development courses after graduation, or even better, undertaking business management masterclasses. They should also be encouraged to undertake workplace learning such as universities hosting projects or internships with corporates, pharmaceuticals and government sectors so students can gain insight into these non-clinical fields. The business management mod uh, module should include five main skills. One is management skills, second one is marketing knowledge, third one is budgets and revenue, fourth is quality control and the fifth one is commercial awareness. So management skills, this includes leadership, communication and time management skills. To train this to students, students for instance can be set into different groups and asked to create a new veterinary product and develop a sales pitch for it, kind of like what's like Apprentice or Dragon's Den style type of projects. And this will help to encourage the student in developing their public speaking skills, leadership, delegation of roles and develop their marketing and advertising skills. The second one is marketing knowledge, as I said, adver adver advertisement strategies. And a good way of doing this is getting groups of students to develop new technologies that fills the gaps in veterinary education and veterinary medicine, and then form mar uh, marketing strategy plans for it. Um, a good example of this, if you want to look at this in more detail, is Elsevier as a book publisher, hosts this annual hackathon competition to medical students where medical students would cooperate with, uh, for instance, computer science students to develop technologies that will fill the gaps in human medicine. Likewise, we could do the same for veterinary medicine as well. Budgets and revenues is very important. So to allow students to understand the lingo of business management, students can undertake a project to financially reason and come up with a strategic plan on how to increase um, a fictional hospital's profits by let's 25% in one year. The fourth one is quality control so students should really understand how to act professionally in different scenarios so for instance uh, universities can conduct their own seminars on analysing case scenarios of how vets should conduct themselves professionally according to the national and international standards like AVMA or RCVS codes. 
Fifth one is commercial awareness, so having an appreciation of who your target audience is and customer and adapting your brand and adapting your services to their needs. So for instance, students can groups of students can be asked to research what the target audience is for certain products and then critique the marketing strategy used by these large corporates. So they gain an understanding and commercial awareness of marketing and trying to meet the needs of your customers. As a part of the Standard Committee of Veterinary Education, we strongly emphasise blended learning where part of the curriculum should be taught on-site as well as off-site teaching. And off-site teaching is based on e-learning resources. So if you would like to know more about business management and would like to research more about employable skills and how to develop knowledge in business management, then I recommend you look at these web resources. Um, and the list of these web resources can also be accessed in the description part below this video. So thank you very much for listening into this presentation and stay tuned for upcoming Vets Talks videos. Thank you.